Hey guys and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware. Today we're taking a look at the Ryzen 5600. This is the non-G, non-X variant. This is just the Ryzen 5 5600, six cores, 12 threads. But we're doing the thing that I've done a lot in the past and taking a look at the stock cooler with this thing to see if you can basically get away with the Wraith Stealth cooler that comes with this CPU or do you really need to swap that out for just a generally better cooler. Before we do that though, I do wanna highlight the toolkit that I used in this video. And that is this basic screwdriver kit. And um, it, it's pretty fantastic. It comes with a ton of bits. It's very inexpensive. So if something from iFixit is just a little bit beyond the, the price that you're willing to pay for tools that you may not use all that often for small electronics or just small general tasks, this thing is fantastic. Um, yeah, I just really like it. And I'll link it down below as well as the CPU and the Arctic cooler that I'm putting the Wraith Stealth up against. That's the i35 ARGB. But with all that out of the way, let's hop into the video. So I briefly wanna go over the scope of this video. This is not like an overclocking video. Uh, this is not a video of how to get the absolute most performance you can out of your Ryzen 5600. This is not even a video of how to properly cool your Ryzen 5600. This is just on an open test bench trying to establish whether or not you really need to swap out the Wraith Stealth Cooler if you're gonna be uh, doing things on your PC that push the 5600 for extended periods. Because of course, in very short bursts, it's not really gonna make a huge difference if your cooler isn't quite up to par for covering whatever uh, CPU it's actually trying to cool. But if you are running tasks that are gonna be uh, hitting your CPU for a longer period of time, whether that's work-related tasks or whether you're just playing video games that are particularly stressful on the CPU, you're gonna want a cooler that can be completely saturated and still handling the CPU. CPU just fine. So the basic test setup is this. With these two coolers, the i35 ARGB from Arctic as well as the Wraith Stealth Cooler, it, they're getting a 10 minute stress test in Ida 64, which was plenty enough time for them to become basically saturated with heat. So we could see what the stable temperature on an open test bench is with these coolers as well as what frequency the CPU settled into. So with all of that out of the way, on a 10 minute test run in Ida 64, the i35 ARGB from Arctic had the CPU settling in in about 62, 63 degrees Celsius with a frequency around 4300 to 4400 megahertz, depending on exactly where you freeze the frame. Uh, now switching over to the Wraith Stealth Cooler, we saw things change just a little bit there where we had the Wraith Stealth settling in at 82 degrees Celsius and that clock speed settled in around 4100 to 4200 megahertz. Now also worth noting is the uh, the noise was quite different. The uh, i35 ARGB was you know practically silent because it is a large heatsink on a very manageable CPU. The Wraith Stealth Cooler was not silent and although I can't really give you a great feel with video, here's some unedited audio with the lav mic I was using to sort of get up close to the cooler so you can kind of get a little bit of a measure of of what the uh, noise and pitch of that sort of fan whine is. Here you go. So let's talk about what all of this means because clearly the Arctic cooler not only performs better, gives you much more headroom if you do decide to overclock, but also outright just gives you more performance out of the box if you're hitting all six cores and 12 threads for an extended period of time. Now, if you have a chassis that has good airflow, then the Wraith Stealth Cooler, especially for just gaming workloads, is probably gonna be just fine. Now, I'm not saying that you're not gonna give up any performance whatsoever, especially if you're slamming the CPU for a longer period of time, but what I am saying is the CPU will stay cool enough to be perfectly safe to run over a long period of time. That being said, I will tell you that heat is generally the enemy of computer components. So if you can keep your CPU cooler over a long run, you give your CPU a better chance of lasting for a very, very long time. But if you are concerned about the longevity of your CPU, yeah, you probably should go ahead and get a better cooler for the Ryzen 5600. If you're just looking to get up and running for as cheap as possible with either the idea being you're never gonna upgrade the CPU cooler or you're just gonna upgrade it a little bit ways down the line when you have a little bit more funds available and you can spare the change for that, 
then sure, the Wraith Stealth Cooler is good enough to get you by both in the short term and the longer term, just understanding you're likely giving up just a little bit of performance, especially if you plan to overclock this CPU. So that is it for the Wraith Stealth Cooler cooling the Ryzen 5600. I do want to hear from those of you out there, though, that do have this CPU yourself. Let me know in those comments down below, did you get a different CPU cooler or did you just stick with the Wraith Stealth Cooler and roll with that? I'm also planning on using the CPU in the very near future for a mini ITX build. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out whether I want to go with an RTX 3060 with it or the RX 6600. So if you have thoughts on that matter, also throw those in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what you think about that. But there is more content coming from the Ryzen 5600. Until then though, I'll let YouTube queue up more videos from my channel for you to watch. You can check out those links in the description down below to check out pricing and availability of the things I was talking about today in this video. And with all that, I will see you all in the next one.